Hey Tom, pleased to meet you. Hi, Tom Crutchfield, pleasure to meet you. Simon, pleased to meet you. So, um, if you want to know your boas from your anacondas, or your mambas from your vipers, Tom Crutchfield is your man. We'll go into the venomous room first. Where we thought we in snake breeding circles, Tom is a giant. His Florida-based collection of rare and exotic species is world-renowned. Okay. Let you in first. Just watch your step. A visit to his venomous room is not for the faint-hearted. Here's an example of the most dangerous North American rattlesnake, the Mojave rattlesnake. It only takes about 15 milligrams of venom to be lethal for an average 160-pound man. Gee, take a little more than that for me, weighing a little more than 160 pounds. Uh, this is a large albino cobra, which is captive raised. This is from Southeast Asia. This particular one is the Nayaka Uthia from Thailand. This snake probably causes more deaths in Southeast Asia than any other snake. He's sitting up about, oh, about a foot or so, and that's about as far as he can strike. We don't have to run, we have. You can just tell this thing's angry. And it, it, I'm sorry? Was, it's, no, it's not angry at all. It's not? No, it's afraid. It's afraid. It's afraid. Okay. And I mean, so what would you do if a giant had you? Yeah. Now he's going to turn and he's going to actually try to bite me. That was actually a pretty good attempt. Too. So all these snakes kill their prey and would be attackers using fangs and venom. But I want to see some snakes with a much more brutal approach. Some constrictors. You got any of those? We do. We have constrictors. Okay. Now on this one, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put your hand down, and when you get it, you're going to have to get it behind the neck. You, you can't hesitate. I don't want you to do like this sort of thing, because he's going to see that, and he may strike at you if he does that, and he may bite you, in fact, if you do it. You have to simply put your hand down without hesitation and grab it behind the neck. Do you feel ready to do this? Um, I mean, yeah. the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to bleed a lot. I mean, I'm not going to let it <laughs> do much to you. Yeah, OK, I'm ready. All, All right. right. OK, let's go. Nervous, but ready. Okay, the head is right here. Come around on this side. Just get see it's looking at you. Don't, don't. Go ahead. Grab it behind the neck. Come on, move. Get it out quick. Yeah. You can see oh, the. He's already trying to coil see me. The, yeah. See he's the. Going uh, for my see arm. He's already going In for your fact. arm now. The longer you're holding, the more pressure he's going to put. Yeah. And oh, he's, that's he's probably squeeze, already. Yeah. He's already cutting the uh, the blood completely off to your hand. If you can imagine a much bigger snake wrapped around you. Yes. Every time that you exhale, he's going to squeeze tighter, and you can't breathe very shortly. You, still, you don't die from lack of uh, oxygen. What you die of is a heart, your heart stops because that steady, consistent, hard pressure within just less than a minute, your heart stops and you die. But can you feel the pressure? Look at your hand yeah. now, the color. This snake is now piling on the pressure and this is what it does in defense or an attack. This is really its weapon. And snakes like this have been doing this for 100 million years. This is a technique which worked and it stuck with it. Oh. Yeah, look at how his hand looks. It's, it's, it's literally purple. It actually, it's beginning to hurt now, isn't it? Yeah, you can feel a wee yeah. bit. Uh, it's even trying to coil around my back, if you can see. I think it wants to finish me off. And this thing's, uh, it's it's going for it now. Do you mind taking it off? No, I can take it. Now, Patty, can you help? You're gonna have, she's going to have to unwrap it from the other side oh. here. Hang on, turn it loose. Turn it loose. I got it. Got turn it to the head. Yep. Fine. Oh. I. Oh. Let's put him back in the box. <laughs> it wasn't really trying. What really is scary to me is when you look inside this, kind of reminds me of that movie Alien. You've got like another set of mouth inside the mouth. Look at this, there's a row of teeth here. And then there's, there's also another row inside that. Look at this one right here. So there's two rows of teeth and they're curving backwards, which is absolutely amazing. So if you actually have an animal that gets bit by one of these teeth, its instinct's gonna be to pull away from it. But because the teeth are curving inward, that's actually gonna drive the tooth further into the animal and really secure and anchor that tooth into the animal so that it doesn't get away. What I need to get my head around is how they can actually swallow a prey animal that is many times the size of their own head. Because if I jack my mouth open, you go, ah, I can get a large burger in there, maybe. That's about it, but nothing bigger than that. How does it manage to end up with, its, with a head that size being able to take in something that's this kind of size? Okay, while our head is very fixed, a snake's head is very mobile in many, many places. In a human, the lower jaw is just one bone and it just articulates right with the base of the skull. But in snakes, they actually have a very complicated lower jaw. It has another intermediate bone that connects the lower jaw to the skull. It's called the quadrate bone and you can see it being moved right now, right in here. 
the quadrate bone acts as a double hinge, allowing the mouth to open to an astonishing angle. Unlike in humans, the left and right sides of the jaws are completely separate. Each is free to move as the mouth splays even wider. An extra set of upper teeth move back and forth as the snake walks its jaws along its prey. With the teeth leading the way, the python pulls its body over its meal. But with a mouth and throat full of fur, how does it breathe? This is the beginning of their breathing passageway. This is normally going to be locked up into the roof of the mouth like that to create a nice passageway from the nose all the way down to the trachea and then down to the lungs. So they're normally nose That's breathers. a normal, yeah, that would be the normal yeah. at rest position. But if you've got something big in your mouth, that's gonna separate this and block it. So what these animals would do is actually extend this forward. So even if the, so if, the, you if you grab there, this, yeah. If I just, there you go. There you go, so you've got that opening there. It's almost like having a, a snorkel you can stick out of the front of your mouth to breathe. You know, not only can they stick this out, but the cartilage gives us this windpipe some support. So it's not totally crushed flat. Mm -hmm. There's still an ability to breathe. God, I'm loving that this animal. Amazing. It's just amazing. 